We're back. I'm Jason, and I teach non-technical people like myself how to build apps without writing one line of code. And when I say non-technical, I mean no coding experience. Zero. Anyone can do it. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Anyone can do it. Today we're going to continue building an Airbnb clone uh, on a tool called Bubble. So uh, let's head over to the Airbnb. In part one of this mini series, uh, we started working on this home page and search functionality. We gave the user the ability to search by location and put in a check-in date and a checkout date. And we built a little widget so that they can uh, choose how many adults and children um, are coming on their trip. So if you missed that video, head on back, check that one out first, or stay here. That's cool too, we're chill. Uh, this is part two, so today we're gonna work on the search results page. And I'll show you what that's gonna look like. If we put in some details here. Let's say we're heading out in January, and we're not bringing any children. This is the page we're gonna work on today. So we're going to have a list on the left of properties within our search criteria. Um, some details about the property, like the name, the price, the location, um, a picture for each property, maybe a few pictures. And on the right, we'll need a big old map that maps the properties that we see in the list. So let's get started and work on this screen. Back in Bubble, uh, we created this page originally, search results in our last video, but we haven't uh, worked on it yet, so it's still blank. This was the home page that we created, but yeah, we're gonna work on search results page today. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, if we look back at Airbnb, is the screen is kind of split into two sides. The left side with the list and the right side with the map. Uh, so I'm going to throw a group in here. And we'll start working on the left side first. So this group we're going to put on the left side. And uh, we're going to name it group search list because it's going to be a list of our properties and I also want to put one more group inside that will be kind of like a margin group so it'll it'll have our padding I'll show you what I mean in a second first I want to turn on element border so I can see what I'm doing here is so this one on the inside I want to have a uh, 20 pixels of padding so here I'm going to start it at 20 20 on the X and Y and I'm just going to eyeball it over here to about 20 you can see it says that's 21 that's all right and we'll scroll down here so that just gives us a little bit of padding inside our main group there and we'll name this one as well group search list margin okay next thing we need if we look over here is we can add uh, this title here stays in and then the location that we selected on the previous page uh, so I'm going to put in a text element and It'll say stays in. We'll just throw a style on that. So how do we get the location? Well, if we go back to our home page, I'm going to preview this. In the last video, we set it up so that the parameters that we put on this page are carried over to the next page inside the URL, if you remember. So we'll use this Gravenhurst example again.
Now this is the page that we were just working on and you can see in the URL it says location equals Gravenhurst start and then it also has the start date, the end date, the, and the number of adults and the number of children and it's all contained inside the URL. So that's where we're passing the parameters. So on this page we're just going to extract those parameters from the URL, put them on the page. Let's do it. So we got stays in and then we're going to insert dynamic data here. And there's an option if you scroll right to the bottom for get data from page URL. That's what we want. So we custom made these parameters last time. We called the first one location. So that's, that's the one we want. Let's try that. There we go. So we got stays in Gravenhurst, Ontario. And that's grabbing it from right here in the URL. Now we also want the start date and the end date, so we'll throw that right on top. Um, so here we're going to again insert dynamic data, get data from page URL. This time it's going to be the start date and it's a date. We're also going to format it. That's good. I'm going to put a dash and then we'll get the end date. See how that looks. We'll refresh our preview here. So this is these are the dates I selected, December 11th to December 12th, and we have stays in Gravenhurst, Ontario. All right, so looking good so far. Next thing we want to do is start building out this uh, list underneath that title that we just did. So if you rem remember the way we uh, we can build a list is to use a repeating group. So here on the left side I'm going to choose repeating group. We'll throw that in there and we'll make it full width of our margin group. Now the type of content is going to be properties because it's a list of properties. And data source, we're also going to choose properties here. Um, maybe we'll do one more row, make it a little bit thinner. Five rows should be good with vertical scrolling. So that means if it's more than five rows, you'll just be able to scroll. Now we want this list to be filtered. We don't want it to show every property. We only want it to show properties within a reasonable distance of the location that we selected. Uh, so bubble is a cool feature that I'll show you here. When we select properties as our data source, we want to add a constraint. So we want to filter the list. Um, and we want to do it where the location is within. So since this is a address field, we get this option is within. And we're going to say within maybe 20 kilometers. I live in Canada, so we're going to use kilometers of of what? Well, it's going to be of the um, the location that we put in on the previous step, which again we can grab from the URL. So scrolling down, get data from page URL, parameter name, location. We also want to search for adult count and child count. If you remember on the previous step, if we come back here, you're able to select how many adults and how many children are coming on the trip. So you want to make sure that uh, the list of properties that we give them have enough beds for all the people that are going to be staying there. So again, we can grab that from the URL. Um, looking at my field list here, it looks like we didn't actually add those values to the properties table. So let's go back to data and properties. And I'm going to add a couple more fields here. So if we head back to our data source, we're going to add another constraint and we're going to choose adult count. Uh, so we want properties where the adult count is greater or equal to the properties 
or the ad account that was put into the search. Uh, and this is because we want to make sure that um, the maximum number of adults for these properties is greater than the number of adults that are, or equal to the number of adults that were selected to come on the trip. So they can all fit and they all get a bed. Same for children count. Get uh, from page URL and the parameter was called children count. It was, I believe, let's double check. Yeah, idle count, children count. That's right here. And that's the number. Cool, that's good for now. Uh, so let's start getting some property data in this list here, because at this point, if we preview it again, uh, it's still empty, so we're not seeing anything yet. Uh, so I'm gonna put uh, a group here, first of all, just to give us a little bit of margin. Uh, we're going to do maybe a 10, see how that looks. And we'll give this group a name. We'll just call it group property. And next thing we want to do is divide this into two because if you look here if you look here we have some details on the right side of the row and then the pictures on the left side uh, so we're gonna put one more group here and work on the right side first and then we'll do the images after now one thing we have to do with these groups is this first one we did, group property. We, want, we need to set the type of content. So again, it's it's properties, and we're gonna take the data from the current cell. Whatever row um, it's on, it's gonna take the data from that row. So you could have like a list of a bunch of properties. Each row is a different property, so we're gonna make sure that we get the data for the right property. Um, and then this one, we're just gonna grab the data from the parent group, so from the first group. So they're all showing the right data now. Um, we're gonna throw in a text object, and let's start with the name. Uh, so we'll insert dynamic data, we'll get the data from the parent group, and this is gonna be parent group's name. If you look over here, it's gonna be like Cozy Lakeside Bowers Beach Retreat, that's the name, Salty Blue too. Muskoka cabin nestled among 12 acres. That's what we're looking for there. Uh, so we're gonna throw that in here and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Just set a style here. Now, preview this again. And we got nothing. So why do we have nothing? It's cause we don't have any properties in our database yet. So our properties table is empty. So we're not gonna get any properties in Graven because we don't have any. So we're gonna head back to data and here in data types, this is where you actually set up like tables and fields and what, what type of data that you wanna store. But if you go to app data, these are the actual like records in the table. So these are the actual properties in the property table. And if I look at properties, the table's empty. That's why this grid is empty. Uh, so I'm gonna click new entry so we can make a new one here and uh, start playing with some data. Uh, so these are all the fields that we added. Let's go here and pick one. Mm, salty blue. I'm feeling a little salty, so let's head over to salty blue. Uh, this was the name, so salty blue two would be the name and the description. Uh, here it is. 
is here. This is a cute three bedroom house. Open concept. That's description. What else we got? Like 233 is there Wi-Fi yes, AC yes, one bathroom. Cool. So we have one record in our properties table. We have only one property so far. But now if we go back to preview and refresh, salty blue too. There it is. Um, and remember that this is only going to search for properties that are in Gravenhurst or within 20 kilometers. So if I searched for Toronto, we would get nothing right now. Let's head back to our uh, design mode here. Let's add a few more things. Um, so let's put the location in. Um, back over here. We have the name and the location is right above it. And we're gonna use dynamic data. We're gonna get the data from the parent group and we're gonna use location. And we're gonna style it. Back on our preview, refresh. Now we have the name and we have the location, good. We could put the price, that's important. Um, Maybe reviews. We'll start with price. So we need another text field that we'll throw bottom right corner. This is gonna be the parent group's price per night. Now can we format this? Format it as currency, cool. Decimal places, we don't need any, just say zero. Thousand separator would be comma, sure. And we want dollars. Uh, CAD per night. We can also have reviews, so let's start with the, with the star. And we can use an icon element for that. And I'm gonna look up star, there's one. Let's make it red. Cool. We need the rating and the number of reviews. I don't think we have either of those fields. So let's head back to data and add them in. Of course you can build functionality to automatically up the, update those numbers. Um, but for now we're just going to manually put in some numbers just so we can get some data in and uh, work on the design. So back in app data, if I edit this property that we have, we have a couple new fields now. Uh, so what was the rating of this salty blue? 4.97, not bad. 140 reviews. Uh, 4.97 and what was it? 140. All right, so text field. I want this to say the rating and then in brackets number of reviews. So dynamic data from the parent. We want the rating. And then we want space brackets. We want the number of reviews. And we want the word reviews. Let's see if that worked. Cool, perfect. Uh, I'll just fix that. All right, what's next? Of course we can add all this other stuff, but I think uh, you get the picture. That's, that's good for now for the details. I'm gonna work on the images. Um, so we need to add a field for images because we haven't had it. We haven't added that field yet. So again, I'm going to go back to data, data types. We're going to create a new field. We're going to call it images. It's going to be an image field type. And now we're going to use this. This field is a list multiple entries. And the reason for that is because we're going to be able to add more than one image. 
um, per property. If I didn't check that, you'd only be able to add one image, but uh, th that'll allow us to add as many as we want. So back over in app data, now we have this uh, image uploader. Let's go to salty blue and take some of these images. All right, so we got some images uh, set up on salty blue now. So we're gonna need a image element right here. And we're gonna throw it right here on the space we left for it on the left side. And it's gonna be a dynamic image. We're not gonna upload a static image. It's gonna be ones that come from the table. We're gonna take it from the parent group, from the images field we just made. Now, which one's gonna show? Because we added four. Well, if you click more, you can say the first one, the last one, or random one. Or you can choose which one. Uh, we're going to choose random. Ooh. I think I'm just gonna add a few more properties to our database just so you can see how it filters. So BRB, let me add that data, and then I think we'll be close to done. Okay, so I have three properties in the database now, two in Gravenhurst, one in Toronto. So let's head back to our homepage here, and we're gonna search for a Toronto this time. And here's our one Toronto property, high rise condo with stunning views. If I refresh the page, see the image changes every time. It's because we set it to a random image. And let's try Gravenhurst. And Gravenhurst, we have two properties our salty blue that we already talked about and entire residential home hosted by Jen. That is the wrong name. It was supposed to be cozy two bedroom cottage. Cozy two bedroom cottage rated 4.6 99 reviews $228 per night. Okay, last thing we need here is the big old map on the right side. Let's do that. Heading back to search results page. There is a element called map. The marker address is going to be a search of properties with the, with the same filters that we set up on the list screen on the left. So if you remember from there, the location is within 20 kilometers of the location parameter in the URL. Same constraints or filters, whatever you want to call them as the list. And we want to make sure that we say that this is a list of markers. We're going to make this large full width here and full height. There we go. Salty blue two and cozy two bedroom cottage. All right. So I'm going to stop here for this video. Um, tune into the next one and we're going to start building the property page. Maybe some other stuff, I'm not sure yet, lots of directions we can go, but at least we will look at this page here where we have a list of all the images, all the details about the property, and a little widget here where you can reserve the property. Uh, so that's all coming up in the next one. I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and uh, tune into the next one. Also feel free to leave a comment with your questions or video requests or just say hi. I uh, would love to chat. Thanks again and we'll see you soon. Peace.